Hey guys, it's RJ of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Underground here, trying to get you a video from all the way out here in California about my favorite deck of all time. So, here is Scraps the Breakdown. Now, as any rogue deck player, you have to first wonder, why would you play this deck? This is why you play this deck. Scrap Dragon. Generic, level 8, 2800, 2000. Once per turn, you can target one card you control and one card your opponent controlled. Destroy them both. You can, you can turn any dead card or like a set spell or something, anything, into a one-for-one one into your opponent. So, theoretically, if you get any kind of card advantage off of them, then, with enough turns with this guy, you can just wear them down into nothing and finish them off. It's great, it's extremely powerful, and it's made even better in a scrap-oriented deck by his oft-forgotten secondary effect. If this card is destroyed and sent to your graveyard by an opponent's card effect or battle, special summon one scrap monster, non-synchro, from your graveyard. It floats on top of that, which makes it extremely powerful for getting and keeping card advantage and a simple game state, which is how slow rolling, like, stun decks like that kind of work. It's extremely powerful, and luckily, scraps come equipped with the perfect way of getting it out in Scrap Chimera. You normal summon this guy. You can special summon a scrap tuner level 4 or lower from your graveyard. It can only be used for scrap synchro summons, which is fine, because you can normal summon this guy, special your tuner, and make a one card scrap dragon, which is great, because if you have any sort of advantage, you can start using scrap dragon to keep that advantage, keep a simple game state, wear your opponent down for the victory. Now, as for other scrap cards that you have to run with this guy, you have Scrap Beast, the tuner that goes with it, level 4. Scrap Yard, it's sort of your scrap rota for your scrap beast. And then Scrap Storm, which gives you some consistency with Beast, because Beast has an additional effect. If he's destroyed by a scrap card and sent to the graveyard, you can add a scrap monster with a different name from your graveyard to your hand. What Scrap Storm does is you target a face-up scrap monster you control, mill one scrap from your deck, draw one card, and destroy the targeted scrap monster. With Scrap Beast, you target it with Scrap Storm, mill Scrap Chimera, draw a card, Beast's destroyed. Scrap Storm is a scrap card, you then add the Chimera back to your hand, making this a Scrap Beast on field and a Scrap Storm traded for a draw card and a live scrap chimera, getting you to your one card scrap dragon that much faster, staying efficient with your card advantage. However, these are pretty much the only non-lackluster scrap monsters that there are. Scrap cards, pretty much, that there are. And that's only 11 cards. And also, you have three scrap beast, two ways to search it, and then three Scrap Storm. So you aren't always going to get that setup of Scrap Beast plus Scrap Storm to efficiently get to your Scrap Chimeras. So you have to do something else to get to Scrap Dragon efficiently. Now, you can sort of do a Scrap Stun deck with like a bunch of hard back row playing Scrap Beast and Scrap Storm sort of like a Beater plus Gemini Spark. like how heroes used to, and then do stuff like use Photon Thrasher to just get to Scrap Dragon quickly without worrying about card advantage. But that isn't the most efficient thing to do. You obviously go negative one when you use Photon Thrasher like that. And there's always risks involved when playing with a lot of hard back row, even though Heavy Storm's no longer a thing. So the alternative method is to use a level 4 engine along with Scrap Beast to quickly get to Scrap Dragon. Historically, being something like Reborn Tengu. Scrap Beast plus Reborn Tengu into Scrap Dragon, you get another Tengu, pop that 
with Scrap Dragon, blow up an opponent's card, get your last Tengu. You went from Beast plus Tengu into Tengu plus Scrap Dragon plus an apopped opponent's card. It's pretty plus, and a good way to get you started rolling. You now have that plus one on your opponent that you can then wear them down with Scrap Dragon. Another powerful level 4 engine to get you to Scrap Dragon is the Gravekeeper engine. This is actually what I used to get my first regional top. Set Gravekeeper Spy, they attack into it, flip it, Special Summon Descendant, tribute the Spy to blow up a problematic back row that might threaten your Scrap Dragon. Normal Beast, Sync Descendant and Beast into Scrap Dragon, having now traded a set spy and a beast in hand for a popped card and a scrap dragon, efficiently getting you there, even if you don't start with the same plus. But the engine that I'm actually going to use, because Gravekeeper Spy, while it used to be a thing that you could do, like play Thunder Kings, Effect Veilers, Gravekeepers, maybe a BLS, your scrap cards, and some back row, that's not necessarily the best deck anymore simply because the game's changed. And now there's a better level 4 engine option, and this is the one I'm going to highlight, that being Geargeas. All level 4, all earth, much more efficient with um, consistent. 3 Geargea armor, 2 arsenal, and then 2 accelerator that you can play. Set Geargea armor, flip it up, search for accelerator, Normal Scrap Beast, Special Accelerator, Sink Beast and Armor into Scrap Dragon, Dragon Pop a Card, and Accelerator. Accelerator's effect activates, you can add the armor back to your hand. You go from a set armor and a Scrap Beast in hand to a Scrap Dragon on the field and an armor in hand and an opponent's to pop card, getting you started gaining advantage on your way to the win. pretty powerful, which is why the deck that I'm currently using with scraps has three armor, two arsenal for consistency, and two accelerator, along with that scrap core. However, you can't always make that picture-perfect play that I just described to, into getting advantage, which is why there are a handful of other cards with scraps that do let you get that first plus off of your opponent, or you to start wearing them down with Scrap Dragon over time. Those being continuous traps such as Call of the Haunted or Fiendish Chain. Those that you can use, say, to lock down an opponent's monster and then pop with Scrap Dragon and then you can, say, run over that monster if it's like a tour guide or something that you were able to stop with the Fiendish Chain for a nice plus one. Or Call of the Haunted on, say, Scrap Beast, then you normal a level 4, sink Scrap Dragon, pop a card with the Call of the Haunted, and pop your Call of the Haunted, and then you just traded a Call of the Haunted plus the level 4 in hand, made it into a Scrap Dragon and a popped card. It's really powerful and a good way to get your advantage rolling, which is why I highly advise using them. Then there's also Mind Control, another really fun card. You can just use it to make an efficient sink into Scrap Dragon using Beast, or alternatively, take control of one of your opponent's monsters, target that with Scrap Dragon, pop it and another one of your opponent's cards, straight turning this into two of popped cards for your opponent, which is a good way to continue wearing them down and thus win with this sort of slow rolling scraps. Now, that's your main monster core that I would recommend in a sort of Geargea scrap variant. You also have to fill it out with, say, more consistency. It Sometimes the special summoning lockout hurts, but I'd say it's definitely worth it because scraps play slow enough and like can plus one enough that you generally aren't hurt that much by one turn not special summoning. Three Mystical Space Typhoon, standard good removal. Also a trick you can do is set MST. Next turn comes around. 
Remember, Scrap Dragon targets your card and your opponent's card. It doesn't destroy your card for cost. So you can do that targeting your set MST and an opponent's card. Chain MST, destroy another opponent's card, make this into another two for one, gathering you more advantage. Then Book of Moon, Dark Hole, Compulsory, Warning, Bottomless, Two Mirror Force, Standard Power Traps. Then two other slots. If you noticed, every single monster I've shown so far is Earth, and I hear Dragon Rulers are pretty good. Also, this gives you something to do with, say, that extra Geargia armor that you add to hand in that play I described. You can use it to get back Scrap Dragon. And then two Max E, more of a tech or a medical, but it can really help out this deck, giving you some more advantage to start wearing down your opponent. Also, if they go all in and you don't have a way to like wear them down because they're 2+, plus, this can help mitigate that. So that's sort of how you run Gear Gia Scraps in this variant. There are other variants, but this is the one that I'm most comfortable with and the one that I think personally is best. Now, Scrap Dragon is the star of your deck, so in your extra deck you have to run three. Sadly, I have two first ed ultis and then one super from the tin. Still working on that. Stardust Dragon, good generic. Crimson Blader, a meta call thing. Black Rose, Ally of Justice Cataster. Two Girgagants, for sometimes when you have a Girgia and you can make plays with them, but you don't have scraps ready. Lavalval Chain, for if you do have scraps but not the right ones, you can say Mill a Beast or, to make Chimeras in hand live. If you also have an armor, Digusto Emerald, so you can continue making plays with your Gear Gear stuff or extra like Scrap Dragons, which doesn't come up often, but it's nice to have. Generic Good Rank 4 Black Shift, Generic Good Rank 4 Cowboy, Generic Good Rank 4 Abyss Dweller, Generic Good Rank 4 Maestro of the Symphony de Jin. Now, that's a little bit about how scraps work and are good. And this is the deck that I think is one of the best ways to run it. There are some others, such as Redox Grand Soil Scrap OTK, which does utilize Golem and Goblin, or a fun creation that utilizes Scrap Shark, Mass Chameleon, and Creature Swap. But this is the one that I think is best. And it works off of solid foundations in Yu-Gi-Oh, like card advantage that I was talking about. So, there you have it. That's what I run for scraps now. Now, like, comment, subscribe, and also the Yu-Gi-Oh! Underground now has a Facebook group. Just the Yu-Gi-Oh! Underground, no dashes in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's all spelled out. So go like us on Facebook too, and... RJ, out.